So what we're going to do now is I'm going to demonstrate how we can use traditional tools, in this case, Postman, to make calls to reactive endpoints. And the Postman tool knows nothing about reactive types. Uh, so it's just going to work as normal. So what I've done here is I've started up all the different microservices and app gateway services and Eureka discovery services that are needed to run the flights reactive microservices app. And let's go over here now and let's bring up Postman. And before I show Postman's behavior, I want to do one other thing real quick. This is the configuration script that Postman read in order to be able to set up what we're about to look at. And so you can see this is all written in uh, JSON. And so we're defining like the airport's uh, endpoint, which is a get endpoint. You can see what the header information is. It's a, a content type application JSON. Ignore the body part. The body is what happens when you run the test. It'll keep track of the last body. And then here's the URL that this is how we access the airports. And of course, what the response is is what comes back. Uh, and you can see we have this for flights. You can see that flights is a bit more interesting. It breaks things up a little bit more. We've got query parameters here, like the departure airport and the arrival airport, departure date, currency, and so on. And then down here, we have best price, which is pretty much the same thing. We have exchange rate, which is described here. And this is what's going to uh, go up and find the current exchange rate. You can see we send in a key, which is the from currency, which in this case was Canadian, to the to currency, which is US dollars. And we, we have a couple different variants of that. We also have another version that passes in the, uh, the from currency. And then we get a, back a bunch of uh, two currencies. We get all the things that map to that. And you can see that we're going to get back a bunch of different stuff when I run the test. And then the final thing we have here is getting dates from one airport to another. And again, this comes back and we get the departure airport, the arrival airport, and we'll come back with the dates for the response. So this is the information that is snarfed into Postman. And here's what Postman produces as a result. For each of those different endpoints, we can go ahead and take a look and see what parameters are passed in, if any, take a look at header information and so on. And then if we choose, we can go ahead and send a request. And you can see here, this just goes ahead. This, this call here is with Postman. Postman does not know about uh, reactive types. It doesn't know about fluxes and monos. It just knows how to make a get request. And you can see what we do is we see the result that comes back, which is basically all those different uh, airport codes and airport names. And that's coming back from my reactive microservice. And it's coming back reactively, but we're treating it from the point of view of the caller as if it was just a good old synchronous call. So Postman doesn't know anything about that. Here we're doing- How does the caller then know when to operate on the data? When it comes back. It, it just it just comes back as a, it just comes back. That, that was the point I made earlier when we were talking about this in the previous lesson about Webflux. If it comes back, when it's done, it'll be the end of the transmission. And then at that point, the, uh, at that point, you've got the response, you have the entirety of the response in the, the body. And so it, it has it, right? Just, just like as it, just as if it was returning it as a list. If from, from the point of view of Postman, it thinks it's a list. The fact that it might come back in dribs and drabs doesn't matter from the point of view of Postman. Now, and this, but that's an interesting question. So this is the way that this would actually matter in practice. So one of the things you can do with fluxes is you can return the results, you know, with, with delays. Let, let's say you're sampling some real time sensor once a minute or something like that. And so you could set up a flux that will return a result once a minute. Um, in that particular case, you, you, this, by the way, this wouldn't work if you did the live, uh, the server sent event model, cause it would never terminate, but assuming that you eventually terminate after a while, that would simply mean that the client, which in this case is Postman, wouldn't know that everything was done until the last sample was sent out. But that was the point I made before. The, the client thinks this is just a list that's taking a while to get there. So from a synchronous point of view, it's not able to print the result until all the data has shown up that's part of that JSON. Conversely, if you're using a reactive enabled client, 
then in that particular case, it's going to know that it's getting it back in dribs and drabs. And so it'll just give the results back right away. So that, that's why it's a benefit to use reactive clients if your server is sending it reactively. Whereas if you don't have that ability, then you have to wait for everything to finish. So as you can see here, we have a couple of uh, flights. We can also come and say, what's the best price? And we get back the best price. You can see, can, we can ask for the exchange rate. You can see the exchange rate for Canadian to US dollars is 0.68, whatever that means. Um, we can also ask for a bunch of exchange rates from uh, US dollars to, uh, from, uh, well, we wanna convert everything to US dollars. So Canadian, Japan, and so on and so forth. And then you can also come over here and find out what the, uh, the dates are for different airports. These are the dates that you can fly from airport one to airport two. These are the dates you can fly from airport two to airport three. And once again, you can kind of see how this stuff is coming back. It's just coming back as application JSON. So that's what Postman thinks is coming back. It doesn't know there's anything particularly special about that one way or the other. What I'd like to do now for Kix is let's go over here and let's go take a look at the source code for this stuff. And this will really be interesting. So if we go over and take a look at flight here and we look at flight service, then what you'll see is that, uh, let's see, which one did I do this to? Uh, I think it was maybe airports. Where's airports? There we go. So right now you can see that get airports at the moment is implemented using the reactive web client. So what that means is that when the when Postman or the regular client calls get airports, then get airports turns around and asynchronously invokes the request to go back to the airport microservice and will then asynchronously get the result back. And that that's what we were just running. It would be absolutely trivial, however, to comment that code out and replace it with this code. And this is the same functionality, the same, I won't say the same behavior because it, it will be synchronous rather than asynchronous, but the, the results will be the same, except this is going to use REST template. So all we would have to do is just uncomment this code, comment this code out, and then we would do a synchronous call from the get airports endpoint, which would then go synchronously to the uh, airport's microservice, synchronously get the result back, and then convert it in this particular case, because we're trying not to change anything in this code. But this is this particular piece of code is the front end app gateway. So as a consequence, it's it's serving the role of both a middle tier server and a client to the microservices, or to a microservice, in this case, the airport's microservice. So because we didn't want to have to change the middle tier API, we then take the list that comes back here from or actually the array and we go ahead and convert that to a list and then we use from iterable to turn that into a flux and then we send that back so what this is illustrating is just how easy it is to shift back and forth between calling conventions on the on a client right because this guy is a client to a microservice and nothing else has to change the microservice doesn't have to change in this particular case the originating client didn't have to change because we converted the results back to a reactive type before we sent them back. Um, this, this approach, of course, is not going to be quite as asynchronous as this approach because this approach will allow the airport's microservice to send the airport's data back in dribs and drabs if it needs to. And then this will then send that back in dribs and drabs to the ultimate client, which means we can have end-to-end -end asynchrony is much more scalable as we've talked about before. Now, of course, this all presupposes the fact that we're using an asynchronous database for all this. And if you take a look here, in fact, we were. We were using the reactive CRUD repository, which is asynchronous, as opposed to using the JPA repository, which is synchronous. So the point of this is we can extend asynchrony all the way through from uh, client to ultimate servers and running in the database somewhere and the whole thing in between can be done in a reactive model which is very cool 